Hey hockey player, in this video I'm going to teach you how to recover faster from hockey injuries so that you can get back on the ice doing what you do best. Look, getting injured is stressful, nobody's saying that it's not, but in any way, shape, or form, if you can mitigate that stress response, that would be the best thing that you can do because it's important not to put so much energy into something you can no longer control. You're injured, it's done, there's nothing you can do about it, and stress will in fact delay the rate at which you recover. Stress increases certain hormones and glucocorticoids that get released in the body that actually send signals for tissue breakdown rather than tissue build up or tissue repair. So any way that you can introduce some form of meditation, some form of breathing practice, some form of any acceptance towards the injury, you're going to be taking the first step that's required in order to heal faster than ever. I can't emphasize that enough. And any important conversation about real scientifically validated strategies to recover faster from injuries needs to begin with sleep. Sleep is the king of recovery. Most all systems in the body are anabolic while you're sleeping. Anabolic mean building up and repairing. Everything from your immune system to your endocrine system to your muscles to your tendons and ligaments to your bones, absolutely everything goes into a repair phase during your sleep. So during injury, it's very important to prioritize sleep length and sleep quality. The way in which you would do this is ideally to receive seven to nine hours of sleep per night every night and do your best to ensure that it's uninterrupted because the research is very clear that interrupted sleep, getting up too frequently to urinate throughout the night, having flashing lights from a TV, sound coming in from music or light coming in the window, these are all things that can cause disruptions and ultimately may not impact your sleep length but will impact your sleep quality over time so that you don't get as restorative and as much repair benefits as you otherwise would have. Very important to prioritize sleep because that's when truly we are rebuilding the body. But in the, co in the conversation of rebuilding the body, we can't just talk about sleep because rebuilding the body requires raw materials, doesn't it? We can't just get tissue regeneration for free. If you do get an ankle strain or if you do get a muscle tear or if you do break a shoulder, collarbone, whatever it's gonna be, you can't just repair that for free. It requires nutrients, it requires dietary nutrients, it may steal some nutrients from other areas of your body to support that healing area, it just simply will never come for free. Just like you can't build a building with no materials, you can't build a body with no raw materials either. And it all begins with calories. And calories becomes a tricky situation because calories, they are a unit of energy, not a unit of mass. So a lot of people look at calories and look to manipulate them based on their energy levels. And since they are injured, their energy levels have gone down because their energy expenditure per day every day isn't nearly as high because if you got a lower body injury, you might not be going to practice. You're definitely not going to games. You're not going to be doing lower body workouts. You're not going to be doing your speed, agility, and conditioning. There's a lot of stuff you're not doing. So the, the average athlete's mind would say, hey, if I'm not expending as much energy as I normally do on a daily basis, I should really lower my calories. I don't want you to do that. I know you think that that's the correct strategy right now, but it's definitely the wrong strategy. Calorie intake. An athlete who is going to decrease their calories and therefore end up in what's known as a hypocaloric state, where calories in are less than calories out per day every day. This is typically characterized by someone in a fat loss phase. This is not what you want to do during injury repair, because although physical energy expenditure is down, Tissue regeneration is up. Tissue regeneration costs a lot, of in, a lot of energy, rather, and research has shown that even small injuries can create a 15 to 20% increase in your basal metabolic rate per day, every single day, until that injury is repaired. Why? 
because repair costs a lot of energy. You need to take certain nutrients and then truly rebuild a bone or rebuild a tendon or ligament or rebuild the damaged cell debris in an area of a muscle strain or muscle pull. This stuff costs a lot of energy and very repeated research at this point in time has demonstrated up to a 15 to 20 percent increase in your metabolic rate per day. So if you're decreasing your calories, but your tissue regeneration demands a 20% increase in metabolic output, well, now we're at a deficit. And isn't it a bad idea to create a bigger deficit during a time when you need more raw materials than ever to accelerate your tissue regeneration? That's why I recommend eating at caloric maintenance. Caloric maintenance represents a situation of energy balance where your calories in are equal to your calories out on a daily basis. Typically, this is body weight in pounds times 15. That's an easy way to calculate and estimate your current maintenance. This is the perfect way in which you want to stay during your injury repair because A, it allows you to recover at a faster rate, but B, it's going to keep your body composition where you want it. Here's what I mean by that. Anytime you decrease your physical activity, just the fact that you've decreased your physical activity alone is going to put you at risk for muscle loss. If you want to accelerate the rate at which you lose muscle, Try eating a lot less calories while you're also being less active. You're sending less physical signals to your body that you don't need the muscle around, but then you're also not giving the body the amount of protein and calories it needs to sustain your current level of muscle mass. So when you eat at maintenance, not only are you providing your body enough calories in order to regenerate those tissues that are currently repairing, but you're also providing your body the signals in the environment that tell it that it's safe to hold on to your current level of lean muscle mass because the body is not in a state of starvation or hypocalorism. Got it? Eat at maintenance. It wins every single time in the conversation of injury recovery and repair. Moving on to our macronutrients. Macronutrients are simply the nutrients at which make up your caloric intake. Protein, carbohydrates, and fats. When it comes to injury repair, the most important one is protein. We're going to be using protein in order to regenerate and repair our connective tissue during injury repair. How much protein do we need? Well, research suggests we don't need any more than what we usually need in terms of elite athletics. And that is about 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight per day. Or if you work in kilograms, that would be 1.8 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. That is the most important thing. And that protein is going to help create what's known as protein synthesis. Synthesis. I know that sounds fancy, but it's not. Anytime you hear the word synthesis, it just simply means creation or generation of. So we're going to have enough protein per meal to create protein synthesis so that protein can go towards protein repair at the injury site and rebuild and regenerate that connective tissue. Whether it be your joints or your muscles, protein is going to be a high level of importance here. How and when would you have it? Well, you would simply just do an equal distribution throughout the day for maximal injury repair benefits. What does that look like? Well, if you were 200 pounds and you had five meals per day, that would mean you would have 40 grams of protein at each meal. So just one gram of protein per pound of body weight per day. See how many meals you have throughout the day. Divide it perfectly even, and you're going to be doing the perfect strategy that you need for injury repair. Now, in terms of carbohydrates and fats, this is a little bit more individual, so unfortunately I can't comment too much on this because carbohydrates tend to follow the energy expenditure of the day. So if you're injured and you're a computer desk worker, your carbohydrates will be pretty low during this time. But if you're injured and not going to hockey, but you're still a construction worker, well, then you're going to need more carbohydrates per day than the computer desk worker. Or, for example, if you're a roofer or if you're a furniture mover, these are all job descriptions that demand more carbohydrates per day, whether you're playing hockey or not. So ideally, I just want you to have one gram of protein per bound body weight per day or 2.2 per kilo per day, and then allow car carbohydrates and fats to just fill the rest of whatever your caloric allotment was at body weight in pounds times 15. If you're following that, you're going to be doing absolutely great. 
Moving on with how we're going to build up our diet. You guys, I know I sound like mom, but you need to eat your fruits and vegetables. It's during this time where it's more important than ever. Not just because it's healthy to eat your fruits and vegetables, but because fruits and vegetables contain many vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients that act as cofactors to facilitate injury repair. So for example, zinc is very important for tissue regeneration. We know very good and well that things like vitamin C increase collagen synthesis in the body and help regenerate joint tissue. These micronutrients help the macronutrients do their job better. You need both in order to facilitate the fastest possible injury recovery, not to mention fruits and vegetables also have a very high anti-inflammatory effect on our body, which can help with pain management and swelling. And anybody who's been injured wants to get rid of two things, pain and swelling. So this department really helps out, not just the repair process and the speed and quality of that repair process, but it also facilitates just a better life quality through, through suppressing pain and swelling much more effectively than if you were to only focus on macronutrients and get your foods from wherever you want, all right? Four to six servings per day of combined fruits and vegetables would be the ideal recommendation here. But during this time, honestly, the more the merrier. I think that it's a great thing to do to provide your body with as many raw macro and as many raw micronutrients as you can to get back on the ice as soon as possible. No better way to do that than with whole foods. But if you do want to supplement the process and help your immune system do its job a little bit better, because it's the immune system that's actually responsible for all of the steps in injury repair, to the everything from the initial inflammatory response, to the tissue remodeling, to the cleaning out of cellular debris that are in the area, that's immune system, immune system, immune system. So anything that you can do to support immune function, in turn, as a byproduct, is going to help with injury repair and getting you back on the ice faster. What supplements do we know are going to help out with immune system function? Zinc, garlic, and vitamin C. These are three options very well demonstrated within the literature to create acute effects on immune system function. There are plenty other options out there that have a more of a chronic effect as you consume them over time and they modulate certain things within our immune and endocrine systems. But that acute, that quick effect is kind of what we want during the injury repair process as athletes so we can get back to doing what we do best. Again, that's zinc, garlic, and vitamin C. Zinc, ideally, your total daily dosage would be somewhere between 10 and 15 milligrams. Vitamin C, your total daily dosage would be around 500 milligrams. And for garlic, you can, I would specifically recommend aged garlic extract to be had at 600 milligrams twice per day. But if you don't want to do that, you can actually just eat two garlic cloves in your diet and it would do the exact same thing. All of those nutrients are really gonna help support immune system function and in turn, help out with your tissue repair. But if you're following everything in the diet, um, supplements are called supplements because they supplement the diet. You can't not follow the diet and only do the supplements and expect it to work. You wanna have this stuff in line first, right? If you're not sleeping well and you don't have your diet in check, don't expect the supplements to do a lot. They're a small add-on to the situation, whereas this is the bulk of where you, of the, the determinants that are gonna determine the speed at which you get back on the ice. Got it? Good. Moving on. Do what you can, okay? Don't focus on what you can't do. Focus on what you can do. If I have a lower body injury, I could probably still do some core work. If I got a lower body injury, I could probably still do some pressing. I can definitely train my arms. I can do shoulder work. I can do back work. Um, conversely, if I've got a shoulder injury, nothing's stopping me from doing split squats, from doing T-stands, from doing ankle gliding at wall, from doing uh, banded dorsi and plantar flexions to improve my edge work. There's so many things that we can do, but we wallow in our own self-pity because we're injured. Like, I'm injured, I'm taking a break. Well. Sure, you can take a break, but you're going to be doing two wrong things in this situation. Number one, you can make a lot of progress in other areas of your body that would have otherwise been neglected during this time. And that progress can help you get back on the ice better than ever before if you focus on what you can do. 
But the second thing that you're going to be doing really wrong if you don't stay active is you're not going to be doing active recovery. And research is quite clear that active recovery is actually superior for recovery than doing nothing at all. Meaning, when you do walks, if you do an upper body session, if you do a lower body session, you're avoiding your injury, of course, you're still creating a flushing effect. You're still creating a hormetic effect that's going to help your body ultimately get better at a faster rate than it otherwise would have. So instead of sitting at home and playing PS4 all day, you want to make sure that you're doing what you can rather than focusing on what you can't. And in this department, Lots of times you can still stick handle at home. Lots of times you can still do your shooting drills at home. And even if, let's say, you know, you can't absolutely do anything. Well, there's never a point where you can't do anything because you can still study film, can't you? You can still study on ice strategy. You can still study uh, if there's even footage of yourself on the ice. You can watch and see what you're doing wrong. There's, there's tactics, offensive awareness, defensive awareness. Use this time to build your hockey IQ. Like, there's so much that you can do, which really just leads me into my last statement of mindset, which is you're injured, okay? Although your priorities change right now, your effort shouldn't. I want to say that again. Although your priorities change while you're injured, your effort shouldn't. Your effort is now just being slotted into different areas. Write a list. What can I do? And execute the heck out of that list. You know, you, instead of people get trapped in this, in this situation where they are injured and then when they finally get back to the ice, these are the people that it takes like a lot of sessions on the ice to kind of feel their groove again. Whereas, if you focus on what you can do and you focus on these strategies to help you get back on the ice faster, first of all, this could be the difference between an injury taking seven weeks to heal and an injury taking four weeks to heal. Second of all, when you do this kind of stuff, you are going to be able to get back on the ice and find your groove way faster than if you were just lazy this entire time. And third of all, it's not just about you. Your coach and your team are depending on you to get better, faster, and to focus on what you can do so that you can contribute optimally to the team when you get back. It's not just about you, it's about everybody around you, and it's about your hockey dreams. Follow these rules, and I promise you, you're going to recover faster, and you're going to be way better for it. It's going to appear as if you didn't even miss a step when you get back out on the ice. Thanks so much for watching this video. As always, if you liked it, make sure you smash that thumbs up button and also subscribe to the Hockey Training channel. And for your free goal scoring package, click on the link in the comment section below.